Hey everybody, just a quick video today. This is just for fun. I love these types of videos or these types of bolos. In case you're wondering, or if you're new to reselling, a bolo is a be on the lookout. So these are items that you can find at thrift stores or yard sales or estate sales, or maybe in your own closets and drawers. And they sell for crazy money on eBay. We're gonna focus on the crafting category today and I just found five things that I've heard about over the years and um, I think only one of them have I ever found. But anyway, we will um, talk about all of these really quickly. Like I said, it's not gonna be a super long video. I am just gonna pop up some pictures of the items that I'm talking about. So if you want to get a pencil and paper and just write it down so that you can do a little bit more research on your own and see a better picture of the things that I'm going to show you because you would not really believe the selling prices of these items. Now I'm not saying that these are going to be easy to find. They, a bolo can be a bread and butter kind of thing that, you know, in general, just keep an eye out for these things. Or it can be a like, whoa, like really keep an eye out for these things. And you know, it'll be totally worth it if you can find one. More of a needle in the haystack kind of thing, but still fun. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna do the craft category. So we're gonna start off right away with the first one, which is the Singer Penguin Walking Presser Foot. <laughs> Anyway, um, this is an attachment that goes to a Singer Featherweight sewing machine. Now there's only three listed right now that I could find on eBay as of the time of this video. And they're listed for about $1,600, $1,800. And then there's one going at auction right now. It has five days left and it's up to $500. So if we look at the solds, there were seven in the solds, and I think that included my the way my search worked. One of the solds was a, the booklet or the manual that goes with the attachment. Just the manual alone sold for $50. So we see that there's one that sold for $1,595. There's another one that sold for $1,390. We have an, a $1,850 and then we have $1,300. So definitely over $1,000 if you can find this, what I would assume is a fairly rare attachment. Um, it, it won't say penguin on it, but it will say singer walking presser foot. You're gonna wanna look up the, you know, the number, the number on it. Take a look at the pictures. Here's a picture of what it actually looks like. Um, so the box, if, it, if you find it in the box, that's definitely gonna be more value, especially if you have the box, the manual and everything. The box will help identify it because it'll say Singer Walking Presser Foot on it. It won't say Penguin because that was just a name that kind of got added to it because of how it looks like it waddles when it walks, when it's working. So, like I said, here's a picture of what the item, what the presser foot actually looks like to kind of burn that into your brain <laughs> in case you find it. Now, the reason for the pricing on this is most likely because it is associated with the Singer Featherweight sewing machine. And so speaking of that, let's just talk about Singer Featherweight sewing machines. As you can see, that attachment sells for over a thousand dollars. Now, an average, probably not necessarily rare, but a more common version of the Singer Featherweight machine, probably would be like in the three to four hundred dollar range, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. I'd be happy with that. Here's an example of some of those. Um, they cost less than that attachment. <laughs> but the featherweight machines are a bolo. They are smaller than a regular sewing machine and they're portable. So you look for the little case, as you can see in some of these pictures, especially if it comes in its little case, 
you look for that little case. I have seen one in person. My mother-in-law did find one at the thrift store. So I know it's possible. And um, yeah, just a smaller case than usual for a sewing machine. And it's featherweight. It was a little bit of a lighter, more portable version of it. So this has been on my bucket list for a little while. Um, haven't found one yet, but I am not giving up hope on that. Here are some of the higher priced Singer featherweight sewing machines that I found. There's these early rare versions. There's something to do with what they have on them. So do your research if you find one. Four to five thousand dollars is what these early rare ones were selling for. Then we can drop down in price to seventeen hundred or so. All these are talking about they have a free arm. Again, I don't sew, I don't know what that means, but I would research the bejesus out of, <laughs> out of this um, if I found one. Um, there's versions that have been refurbished, there's versions that come in different colors, all these things will affect the value. And if you can have the case and a bunch of accessories and attachments and things to go with it, you know, your asking price is going to be a lot higher. So yeah, do your research, take a look at Singer Featherweight, just look it up, um, 221, 222, that's usually the model number on those. Keep your eyes open for that little black portable carrying case. Okay, so while we're talking about sewing machines and we're talking about sewing machine parts and attachments, we're just gonna talk about one that, um, it's not gonna be worth the thousands of dollars like some of these other things that I have been sharing with you. Um, but they it's still a really under the radar small kind of item and it can sell for about 35 to $40. And what I'm talking about is this, it's an eyelet template for a button holder. It could also be called a cam, I think. And it gets used on the buttonholer. So maybe you've seen these buttonholer sets. They're fairly common. They're, I've even sold the little um, box of templates that go with it. And those are just kind of the four standard templates that, you know, no big deal to make buttonholes. Now this one looks like those, but it's round. It's for an eyelet, for making eyelets. And it is a little bit harder to find. It was like a bonus thing that not everybody got when they got their buttonholer. So it can sell in the $35 to $40 range. I just think that's fun. I just think that's fascinating because not everybody, you know, is going to know that, right? And they're not, they're not everyone, every, you know, people might just throw it together. It might be, you know, in this big lot of sewing notions and supplies and things like that. And you just might happen to come across it. So I think that's fun. And I was having a memory and I found one and I sold one. So I have already done this. <laughs> I sold mine for $40 back in 2019. And as I edit this, if I can find the picture of it, of mine, then I will share it with you. But obviously the eBay listing is long gone. So anyway, 40, about $40 for this little tiny little piece of metal that could be just bouncing around in all this other sewing machine attachments and pieces, parts that are not worth as much. Let's change categories real quickly. Let's talk about embroidery. Now, if you're like me, you see these all the time. Every thrift store, you see these wooden embroidery hoops, right? Kind of a, you know, ubiquitous thrift store type item. But what you want to look for, and what I have started trying to remember to look closer at is this queen embroidery hoop. Queen is the brand. A wooden embroidery hoop sold for two over $200. And that's only one. Some of them, if you look at these, $300, $400, 
for a wooden embroidery hoop. Now, granted, they are, as far as I know, they're antique. And they're not going to be at every thrift store when you, you're going to find a bunch of the regular wooden embroidery hoops that have like the regular screw tension type thing. Now, if you notice the pictures that I'm showing you, I would think this would stand out quite a bit because it's like a dial that is the tension. It's like this big circle on the side of it. So I have to remember to look at those at craft stores as well and to pay attention to do, pay attention to those little details. Stuff like this makes me so antsy. I want to go to a thrift store. I want to go to an estate sale right now <laughs> and look for these things. Um, I guess they're wooden. I don't, I, I don't remember in my research if there was any metal ones, but they're felt lined. Like I said, it's like a wheel is the tension thing. Some of them say queen on the wheel and then some say patented made in the USA. Maybe it says queen someplace else. I saw some listed as queen like, but still selling for a good price. Maybe not as much. Um, maybe there was no brand or something, but it still had that wheel style and the felt and you want to, you know, double check the condition of the felt in there. Who knew? Wooden embroidery hoop, $400. That's just crazy. It's reselling is so much fun. I keep saying it. Okay, so while we're in this category, I'm going to just share one more bolo with you. Now this one, I did also find one time and I will show you mine. So a lot of people know with the like cross stitch and embroidery kits and things like that. A lot of people know that the Christmas ones, there's certain Christmas ones that can be valuable. That's kind of a, a well-known bolo. But here's a brand and a collaboration that you need to know about. And that is Thomas Kincaid with Disney made cross stitch kits. And so in 2019, I sold one. This isn't my picture, but this is the one I sold. And it was The Little Mermaid, Thomas Kincaid, The Little Mermaid, Disney Dreams is what it was called. Now, honestly, at the thrift store, I hesitated. I second guessed myself. I didn't know this was a bolo. I just saw the sealed kit, but they were asking like seven or eight dollars or something. And most kits at the thrift store were two or three. and. I don't mind taking a gamble with that, but I was like, really, Thomas Kincaid? It's just like, you know, I'm sure some of his stuff is valuable, but it's not my vibe. And every time I would look up something by him, it wouldn't be worth anything. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, seven, eight bucks. I'm like, oh, I don't think so. But something made me like stop and scan it, look it up anyway. And I was like, Oh my goodness. So I sold that kit for $300 back in 2019. The solds I saw for the same kit recently were not as high. So I am glad I sold mine when I did. Now look at this one. This one sold at auction. It was a Winnie the Pooh one. It sold at auction for $1,275. And then if you look at Tangled, sold for $766, Beauty and the Beast, $361, and then it just kind of goes down from there. So you just never know when you're looking through all those cross-stitch kits. If you see Thomas Kincaid with Disney, you definitely want to pick that up. So anyway, those are just five quick little tips for bolos for things to file away in your reselling brain and put it in that Rolodex and then get out to those thrift stores and estate sales and see if you can find something like that. This was the crafting category along those same lines. Sewing patterns can also be very profitable and if you wanted, if you haven't seen my videos on selling sewing patterns, you can find them here and here. Hope you guys are having a great week and I will talk to you later.